Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be covering male body types and of course I always include the references and the downloadable resources so go ahead and check those out. I will be basing off my lectures off of these. So once we understand the whole anatomy of the figure, let me find my pencil, uh, we can go ahead and explore different body types. Now I kind of separated these into, well I mean the reference isn't, isn't totally organized but I kind of separated them into athletic build, uh, skinny build, uh, bodybuilder, uh, body type and a more plus size for men as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start. Let's first start out with our average um, muscle build. So let's go ahead and just draw that real quick. I'm also going to be doing a. Uh, I'm not going to be doing the whole entire body this time. I'm probably going to be doing just the top half because usually that's kind of where it kind of starts out. The legs can you know depend on the body type and if the person works them out or not. But anyways, usually uh, for the average build, um, I would say average build if you're if you're muscular. I generally have a, um, just a, just, you know, not too much fat, not too much muscle, just sort of in the middle. So let's go ahead and just draw a head here. And then let's go ahead and just draw our proportions. So one hand down, pit of the neck, clavicle, clavicle. And generally they will have a bit of a sort of triangular build. So let's say one hand down, one hand down, one hand down, make sure it's a 90 degree. And then we can go ahead and divide this into a box. Make sure that when you are doing the pelvis box, um, that the rib cage goes that it goes straight down from the rib cage rather than fanning out like a girl. So, you know, if you want to divide that by half, you can. Uh, this looks a little bit long, so I'm go a little bit short, so I'm going to just elongate this a little bit so it looks more like a half. Three finger gap, pelvis. So generally, a average build would kind of have a slight triangle, full triangle shape. We have our neck, which isn't too broad, but it's broad enough. So this would be good for like you know, like a male character that is um, relatively, uh, relatively muscular. You know, maybe if they work out or whatever. And usually, a lot of people would draw their characters in this way because it just looks attractive. So I mean, I, I don't think I don't think anybody would really want to draw a guy with a dad bod. Um, they want to draw it with some muscular muscular form to it because it just looks appealing. I mean, that's what I've seen all the time in anime anyway, so. Um, although, I probably should have included dad bods, but oh well. So here we have our deltoid. Let's go ahead and just draw a, an arm real quick. Or I'm kind of just out from here. Let's put one down here. So, so far, looks like this. Let me zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see a little bit more in detail. Whoops. I'm drawing relatively small here because last time when I was drawing the bodies, it was like really big. But this one I can see better. So we have our deltoid, which is relatively uh, medium sized. It's not like a bowling ball, so a lot of the time the muscles would be a lot leaner looking. They'd be look, they'd be longer and more natural looking. Here's our bicep, and here's our tricep coming kind of coming through, and here is our elbow. Here's our brachioradialis, and here is our hand. So as you can see, very nice and lean. Not too much muscle, but not too little muscle either. Here we have the pec, which can be kind of fanned out a little bit. And generally, it's like a healthy build, I, I, I would say. Here are the lats, kind of stretching through. So here is the abdominal muscle area. The sheath from the rib cage down down to the pubic bone, and then we, here we have the obliques, which kind of hand go right above the pelvis. So that is usually your, uh, that is usually your average build. And if you noticed, um, my reference pictures are from Pinterest, because <laughs> they have good pictures of those kind of types there. Usually they're like models, like underwear models. Uh, the reason why I chose these kind of images is one, because they're easy to see and they're very straightforward. Um, I also chose them more shirtless just because uh, I want to see the muscles, not the shirt over on top. So try to find those images to study from. 
you can also look at poses online as well. You know, like uh, on an art station, for example, they have a they have a uh, there, there's a thing called Graphit Graphit Studios, and they have really nice pose packs. And uh, yeah, so you can check those out if you want. So I'm gonna bulge this out just a little bit more. And here are the legs. I'm gonna draw some boxers on top. Make sure that when you're drawing boxers or pants or any of the type that you're wrapping around the form. Here we have the sartorius. So of course, the legs will be different as well depending on the body type. So let's go ahead and do a, um, oh, I forgot to add the serratus muscles. So the serratus muscles kind of connect down to the, they kind of are a little bit bigger than I remember. So they kind of connect all the way down from the, um, they kind of connect and kind of fan out and they connect down to the obliques. So now in comparison, let's look at a skinnier guy, more lanky. So if you guys don't know where that one is, it's probably like in a very long, uh, more elongated body in the reference image. So let's go ahead and draw that. So first I'm just gonna start off with the head. Crosshairs or a little line, cross line hair. Anyways, then we have our neck. We have our clavicle. So I'm just putting in the proportions first because it's easiest that way. You can even use, you know, draw in a little bit of the gesture with these boxes. So if this guy is more pushed out forward, I'm making the box more like this. Because this one is it's just easier. And here we have divided by half. Here we have the pelvis, three finger gap. So once we have this in check, we can go ahead and just start drawing. So if you're looking at uh, the reference image here, um, the one where it's like the guy is kind of like long and kind of slanted looking next to the plus size and the bodybuilder are Arnold Schwarzenegger. So that's on the lower row. Uh, this guy is very skinny, meaning uh, he doesn't have much muscle mass, and two, you can see a little bit more of his skeleton. So unlike this one here, which has more muscle mass and more average build, this guy's very lanky. And I will draw another example later on. So or actually, maybe this will be the first one, or the only one, because it's a good example. So notice how bony the collarbone is. You want to actually just kind of make it look a little bit jagged even, uh, but it also has a little bit of thickness. Then for the, uh, then for the neck, you know, it's also pretty broad, but thinner than if you worked your muscles out. So it's generally pretty smooth. This is more of an androgynous look. So if you want your guy to be a bit more feminine, usually the curves would be softened and they wouldn't have much muscle definition. So this is a good example if you want to go a bit more androgynous. <coughs> so, <clears throat> sorry, inhale some spit. Sorry about that. So anyways, <clears throat> Sorry, just let me... Okay. So now let's go ahead and just, you know, maybe draw in the arm so we can draw in the deltoid first. Here is the arm. Kind of have it slide out like that. So here is our deltoid, which is still pretty prominent, but not, uh, but not as defined. So instead of, you know, fully drawing the deltoid, I'm just going to leave it just a little bit softened. I'm just going to hint that, you know, it's kind of coming across from there. And then for the pecs, you know, it still bulges out a bit. It's underneath the deltoid. The bicep isn't very prominent. The tricep is a little bit more prominent. So sometimes you can just, you know, choose which ones to uh, really push out and push in. Because if you just def uh, um, make it all definitive, like all the muscles, you know, very... Uh, very pushed out to look at. It looks very, very bulky. So sometimes even just softening out, softening out the features and not drawing all the muscles works well for body types like this. So here we have the rib cage, and then just it looks it looks almost like jello in a way. But so here we have the serratus muscles. 
here we have the rib cage kind of opening here. And here we have the center line. Here we have the obliques. So simple, very simple once again. It's just same process. If you want to add the sheath, go ahead. I'm only going to put a little bit of abs because there's not much on the image. So I'm just going to wrote, you know, kind of just indicate it there. So notice how when I, when I do draw the abs, it's not just straight. It's kind of curved because for the abs, it is more like, uh, let's see here. It's more like this kind of shape here. It's almost like a little book. And then the rest is kind of just like out there. So when you draw abs, it's sort of this shape. So just keep that in mind. So that is our more lanky pose. You know, I'm not I'm not doing a lot of muscle definition on this one. And the hips make sure that they're not too wide either. And generally the legs would be pretty skinny too. So now let's go ahead and move on to a more uh, built, more like a bodybuilder, like Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of feel. So this is similar to a lot of um, this is similar to a lot of what's it called uh, bodybuilder type or superhero type body types because uh, if you didn't if you didn't already notice, a lot of the muscles are very much like bowling balls. They're very round. They're very tensed up, and that's because they're flexing it. So in this case, let's go ahead and just draw the proportions. And let's give him that superhero like lifting arm pose. So I'm going to erase this because I want to save some room. His collarbone will be lifted up more because he's lifting up his shoulders. So once again, we have our rib cage. We're keeping very similar proportions here just because it's easiest that way. And then we have our box. Three finger gap, pelvis, and then we can go ahead and start detailing them out because we have the basic structure here. So if you want, you can draw out the arm, you know, you can draw them out as simple boxes first, overlapping each other. So these are what rectangles are good for. So we have one arm kind of in front of the other in this one. And then we can just overlap it later. And we can just also add in their arm or their hand. So let's get started with drawing in their legs as well. So we have the front leg kind of in front, then the back one, and the back one's just kind of like that. So let's first start off with the abdominal muscles, or it's starting with the abdominal, uh, the neck muscles first. So as you can see, compared with these other necks here that are thinner, this one is actually really broad because he works out these muscles like the, like the trapezius. So therefore, it kind of looks a lot bigger. Um, the more mass you have, the bigger your, uh, the bigger your everything will be. So, so I would just say, kind of make it very, very thick. Then for the trapezius, it's more bulged out, so adding like a nice roundness to it is really nice. You can even add the Adam's apple. And here we have the deltoid being really, really bunched up, so really just kind of push that out. Same thing on the other side. It almost looks like a bowling ball, as I mentioned earlier. And in a way, the, it, in the um, image with Arnold Schwarzenegger, it looks like the deltoid is connected to the pec, but it's not. Um, it's more like it's overlapping underneath. So as it stretches, you want to elongate it. So here's the sternum. Here's the pec. And have it stretch outward like, like so. I can notice the bicep being like part of the armpit here. Whoops, I don't know if my lead's running out yet. And then it kind of bunches up once again. So once again, like a bowling ball. 
here's the other bicep, or not the other, the other part of the bicep, the roundish part. In the back is your triceps. So as you can see that I'm overlapping my forms across the, uh, across the, well, just the, the boxes here. Here is our brachialis, which translates into the elbow. And here is the brachioradialis side. And have it bulge out this way. So as you can see, very, very round muscles. Very big contrast to like the leaner look here. You don't have to draw the hand really, because I'm just focusing on the muscles. You can even define it by just adding some more lines. But don't just add random muscles where you don't know where it is. Um, so the reason why I know this is where the muscle, the bicep is, is because it's turning upward, whoops, uh, the, the arm is turning upward, therefore the bottom side, which is our bicep, is going to face upward as well. So when you flex, that's why we're like, oh, look at these guns, or like, oh, look at my biceps, like, you know, <laughs> that's because the biceps are facing upward, so this way. <clears throat> now for the other side, once again, bicep curled really inward because it's tensing up, it's flexed. Other side is the tricep underneath, and then here is where the the brach brachialis is, which is the center. Here's the brachioradialis, which tenses up as well as he flexes. And then the other side of the arm. So, very prominent. Here is our big, huge lats. And those tend to fan out really big, therefore creating that really big tri triangular motion. Here's where the lats end. And where the uh, and where the sternocleidomastoid begins, not sternocleidom, uh, the the um, the serratus muscle begins. So of course, as I mentioned earlier, they're sort of like. Let me just try it and well, actually, I'll do this. I'll, I'll I'll replace my lead after this one. So they're like there's like these avocado slices that that trail down. So just add it very subtly if you want. And then here is our big ab abdominal area. So he doesn't really have uh, a, a six pack or a um, or a eight pack. It's just kind of bunched up together. Draw the sheath. Here's our obliques, which sticks out. And the rest is kind of just history. <laughs> it's kind of just like, oh well, these are just kind of not as defined. So here's the underwear, and you can sort of see a little bit of the muscles. So here, muscles in the um, in the leg here. So if you see the bottom leg, once again, it's all it's all separated by the by the sartorius. Here is the vastus, sorry, the rectus femoris, which is our quad at the front. Here's our Lateralis, lateralis, here's our medialis. That's what it looks like. All right, All right so that is our bodybuilder form. <clears throat> Let me see if I have any other ones. Oh, the other ones are pretty similar anyway, so that's another kind. And let's see if I have, oh, I should do the legs here. So when it comes to the legs, it just depends on how they're worked out. So let me go ahead and move this to one side. So let me change my leg real quick. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So if I'm going to be drawing some very muscular legs, I have to know what muscles are prominent. So of course it depends on how you work them out, but generally for a more muscular leg, I'm, go I'm going off of the image with the, just the leg part with the, with the longer underwear. Um, so if you want to look at that, go ahead. So first we're just going to draw the pelvis just to make it easier. Pelvis, three finger gap obliques and there we have it so if I'm going to draw some you know really muscular legs I have to know what part is more emphasized and how they work it out so here we have the tensor fascia I'm just going to be drawing this through a cylinder by the way here's the other leg and notice how they kind of look like chicken legs um, you want to have make sure that there is a a thickness from the top and then gets thin as it gets to the kneecap and then it gets thick again once we get to the calves. So let's first start off with uh, 
with drawing in the calf section. So I'm not going to focus too much on the foot here, but I'm just going to block it in. So here we have our basic leg structure. Based on the image up here, um, up in the reference, once again we separate our leg using the sartorius. And here, as, you, as we see, we see the abductors, which is right in the middle here. Not in the middle, it's sort of toward, towards the inner area. Here we have our medialis sticking out. And notice how I'm drawing lightly because I don't want, the, want it to be too defined. Up at the top we have the, la, uh, the, the, femor, the rectus femoris, which is up, up at the front. And then here we have the lateralis kind of poking out. So notice how I'm overlapping my forms. I'm making sure that the forms are showing the silhouette of the leg. So bicep uh, no, rectus femoris bulges out. Here's the kneecap, the fat pad down here. Here's a little bit of a muscle that kind of bunches up as a ball here. It's sort of a mix between like the sartorius as well as the uh, other quads here. And from the side, we have our uh, medialis. So that's what makes it look really, really bulky and nice looking. So just by emphasizing those muscles, you can really start to understand uh, why and how they work these legs out. For the calf, the calf is very prominent if it's worked out and tensed up. Then we have the other muscles kind of in the front here. So here we have the front muscles on the shin area. There's a lot of muscles here, so I'm just going to be grouping them as one. And the calf is kind of left as its, little, as its own little thing. So yeah, that is how you draw muscular legs as well. Now I'm going to be drawing a plus size version as well, which is our all the way to the bottom right. And this will be a lot easier just because it's full of like curves and um, not very much muscle so you don't have to worry about that too much. Generally uh, plus size people tend to be a lot more fun to draw in my opinion just because they have a lot of curves but I tend to like the aesthetic of the muscular type more uh, just because in anime that's very common to have. So I mean yeah I mean uh, I think one of the exceptions is like just Yuri on ice. I don't watch that anime, but I know that the guy, the main character, starts out off a little bit chubby at first, and then he, the more he skates and the more he practices, the more leaner he gets and the more muscular he gets. So it's sort of like a transition period. So, anyways, let's go ahead and draw a plus size guy here. Um, I'm just showing you guys how to draw it in case you want to draw something like that more. So in this case, I'm making the head a little bit more rounder and plump, just because if I make a very strong jawline, it it doesn't fit very well. So once again, I'm putting in the landmarks, clavicle, um, rib cage, and notice how I'm not changing the size of any of these. The, the misconception is that, um, oh, the bigger the person is, or the more muscular the person is, the bigger the rib cage is, the, str the bigger everything is. That's actually not really true, because every structure of the person is relatively the same. It's the muscle and the fat that's added on top that makes it look big. So refrain from making the rib cage way too big because you're going to add more on top, more stuff on top anyway. So here, let's say if I have my rib cage and my pelvis, three finger gap. So at this point, it starts becoming a lot like you know muscle memory at this point. So then we're going to just add on top. So notice how uh, when I'm I'm you know drawing him skinny first because it's better to do that so you can add on top without uh, being like, oh, well, this looks a little bit too big. What did I do wrong? So it's always good to start skinny because everybody kind of starts skinny anyway. And then you just build on top. <clears throat> so if I want to add more uh, fat onto this person um, or more weight, uh, a lot of it just 
kind of curves out. So rather than something like this, it just becomes more like uh, not not very muscular because the fat and the skin is kind of like just covering all over that. And um, anyways, so with this guy here, he has a lot more neck fat than let's say for instance Arnold Schwarzenegger does. So his neck is broad because of his, because he works it out. This guy here will have more fat around fat pads around the neck. So when you get when you gain more weight, such as me, <laughs> I'm sorry, to gain more weight, you get more fat around your your cheeks. It get more fat around your neck area, around the chin. So that's why it looks a bit thicker. Not because of the muscle mass, but because of the fat. So, and that's just kind of how it is. So I'm making this more broad. And then here we have the trapezius, which still is pretty prominent. It's softened, but it's definitely there. The deltoid is obviously there as well. So the deltoid, you, I think, is, is a muscle that you kind of always see regardless except for when you have when you lose a lot of muscle like from I don't know extreme situations like starvation or whatever this guy's pecs are a lot looser so they're not as firm so they're kind of like you know almost like uh, breasts but not really so make sure that when you are when you're doing some something like this more plus size people that you kind of droop it down a little bit more because it's relaxing the skin is relaxing on top Notice I'm not defining any muscle right now. I'm just rounding out everything. So some people also have like this sort of cleavage look here. Add that as well because that kind of is what it looks like. And then here the skin kind of overlaps and kind of like like kind of flows over. So doing these line exercises will help with that. Here's a little bit of the tricep which kind of can come out as well. And everything's just, in general, just a lot rounder. And it's a lot more fun when you're drawing a girl, for example, who is a bit more plus size and curvy. Um, it's a really fun to draw those because everything's just like, whew, whew, you know, all like, just very, very pretty and curvy. So I have a lot of fun drawing those kinds as well. But anyways, uh, when it comes to the bottom part, notice how rather than it being straight down with the obliques like uh, this guy is his is more uh flowing down like like ribbons or like um like kind of like pudding or something like that and it just kind of flows over the pelvis it's still there but it's definitely a lot bigger here we have the bicep which i think i think he worked out a little bit because i can see it and then you have the forearm and here we have a little bit of the abs, which can, which is a little bit more revealed. If you want to add some fat pads or fat wrinkles or folds, you know, that is very convincing as well. And that is how you draw different types of bodies. So here we have the more plus size, contrast it with uh, the more built and very very muscular type then we have the very lanky type and then we have the more average type so anyways i hope that was helpful let me know what you guys think and i will see you guys in the next one Bye bye